um, it's a pretty curly maple. Uh, this is a piece of wood that I ended up getting for, off of a eight foot board. I got several eight foot boards from a local um, lumber mill that I ended up kind of sorting through and picking them up and I scored big time when I ended up hitting some of them and I have uh, a couple of boards of that that I'm going to end up doing a project with. Okay so I am back in this series. Today I will be doing the last color which is the key to dye liquid blue uh, concentrated dye or dye concentrate I should end up saying. Um, so previously I've done videos on the black the red, yellow, brown. So today will be the blue out of the five color set that is available. Um, currently, this is being sold for $55 on the, uh, I believe it's on all webs, on the website, on eBay, as well as on Amazon. Um, and it is September of 2016. So at this time, that is what these are being sold for. Um, I have done all the other videos on this, so if you're interested in seeing those, please feel free to check them out. Now, with the blue, I'm going to actually be making a little larger batch. Um, I'm going to also be doing this on a little bigger board, number one, because I have a project that I have coming up. So I'm going to actually be testing this on... Uh, you know, for some other specific reasons, I'm making a larger batch because I'm going to, after this video is done, I'm going to actually take that uh, same dye stain that I end up making and just using that on this, on this project that I'm going to be uh, doing later on. So uh, just looking at this board, this is not any fancy maple or anything like that. It's just a, a board of maple, a plain maple that has a knot, you know, in there. So it's nothing really fancy now I did end up sanding this one a little bit different because this is what I'm going to be doing on my project I ended up going over with a 120 sandpaper which again is the wood specific sandpaper and that's the same for all of the the sandpapers I'm going to be mentioning then I ended up going to a 150 a 180 and then eventually going down to a 220 grit and then after I cleaned off all the debris and then just before now, just before I'm going to be applying this, I ended up sanding it out with a 180 with a, I have a variable speed dual action sander on a number four uh, setting for, for, the, for the speed on it. <clears throat> so that's that. I also have an oak board here, just a North American red, red oak board. So with all of that out of the way. Let us get into let us get into making this up. So making this bigger volume is not a big deal. It's pretty similar to the volumes that I've made in the other videos, except for this one. I'm just gonna be going with one cup. So I'm going with a full cup just because I'm gonna be needing a little little more. Okay, usually I'm pretty good at that. Uh, you know, guesstimating the, the volume of lacquer thinner at, uh, in my pores. But every once in a while, <clears throat> excuse me, every once in a while. So again, this is one full cup. Hopefully that, that shows it's one full cup. I know it's a little wobbly, but it really is just one full cup. Okay, so that's one cup of lacquer thinner. And so that's eight ounces and I'm going to be using a half a teaspoon now you probably don't I shouldn't say that I mean you might not need a full one half teaspoon but for the color that I'm looking for I'm just going to go with the one half you could probably get away with one fourth teaspoon and an eighth teaspoon so you could probably end up you know going with those two and the eight ounces but like I said it's this is this is blue, I want it to be a nice vibrant blue. So I'm actually going with the full one half teaspoon, which is what's recommended for, for this volume, uh, as, it says, as it states on the bottle. Well, it says one half teaspoon, six to eight, ounce to, in six to eight ounces. Uh, one other thing too, I've received some questions about whether or not this liquid dye is, 
as a solvent, if it, it can be used as a water base, and yes, it can be. Um, maybe I should just get a little bit of water and show you guys that. So this is just a little bit of water, and I'm just going to take a couple of drops because I don't really want to waste a whole lot of dye, but hopefully this shows good. But as you can see, it does mix up pretty well in water. And that goes with all of them. Alright, so let's get back to this important stuff. Not really. Honestly, you want to let these acclimate into the, the lacquer thinner. You really do. Um, you just end up getting a better uh, concentration of the dye by letting it acclimate into the the lacquer thinner a little bit longer. It allows all the components to open up, which I've mentioned in other videos. For those of you guys watching uh, this this series and has an interest in in this, okay, but. For the purposes of this video, I'm just Okay, so again, make sure that you end up going from off of the board onto the board. You know, so just you know, I'd say go an eighth of an inch off of the board and then come back and then run off of the board, you know, or your piece or, you know, or whatever you, you are actually coloring <clears throat> because that is going to ensure that you don't have start and stop lines on your ends where it ended up starting. Now, I'm sure that this isn't going to show up very well. The blue for some reason it you can't really tell until it fully dries on how it's going to end up working on this wood so i'm just going to set this off to the side and start up on the maple i'm just going to give this another little shake put this back here so maybe you guys can see a little better color because I've noticed that when the boards are off on an angle you can end up seeing it just shows the color better of what truly is in you know is, is what I'm seeing in person so if you see how that's changed how it's lighter and more washed out and then when I set it over here it's just a little bit different a little darker more uh, or I should say less washed out so, um, okay, anyways, so let's move on into this maple piece. I also have some really, really, really nice figured curly maple boards that I ended up getting from a local lumber mill. I was going to do it. You know, I really was, and I'm just itching to end up dying those pieces, but I said, no, I can't do that. You know, I started out this series with just plain maple, plain oak, so I'm just going to continue on. But, you know, I have several boards of this very nice, very, very nice curly maple. What all I'm doing really is just working in the dyes into the grain. And then you'll notice that when I end up finishing, I'll end up, oh, I don't want to keep this moving here. I will end up finishing like this. You know, that's just evening all the dyes to make sure there's no lap lines. Okay, so I'll, I'll fast forward this.
so there we go with that now I know that's not going to show up very good on the on the camera but as this dries out it'll become more and uh, it will become brighter and more and more prevalent so I'm gonna let this dry out but I did notice a small little section right here where I have a little lap line so I'm just trying to hit that blend that in again like I said I just don't want to do anything off camera I mean that involves the two primary boards that I'm using okay that looks pretty straightened out um, okay again this looks a little lighter it's a little different uh, let's see if putting something white underneath ends up helping out yeah sorry nope, not very much but anyways I'm gonna let this dry out and then uh, and then we will we will come back and we'll We'll reassess and reevaluate these when I come back. And um, we'll take a look at it again. Again, I say that I plan on doing a second coat on this. Um, you know, just for the purposes of what I'm going to be doing. So um, maybe what I'll do is I'll take a piece that is, you know, off camera and end up doing the, the single coat as well. Thank you. All right, so these have dried out now. Um, I do have this maple. Looks pretty, pretty clean. Boy, you know what? I just I don't know if I'm gonna do a second coat. Well, you know what? Actually, I did say that I was gonna end up doing a second coat, and you know the project that I am doing is with a second coat. Boy, I just. Uh, Uh, all right, oh, here we go. I'm just gonna scuff sand this. Well, actually, you know what? I do have a piece that I did. Because I was just itching to do a nice figured piece. So I'll show that in just a second. I'm just gonna scuff sand these. Okay, so this is the, the one piece that I have. This is with that figured, with the figured wood that I ended up having. And this is with just the one coat. So this here would end up coming to about this color. Now that's pretty, pretty blue. That's, you know, that's beautiful. That's a very nice, vibrant, very nice color blue. I really like that so um, I just wanted to kind of give that little demonstration so we have that but um, this is going to be with the two coats so and I can't guarantee really that it's going to make a significant difference either it may end up coming out the exact same color But, like I said, for the project that I'm doing, that is going to be done with, with two coats. Um, I also may end up just doing a quick little scuff sand before I end up sealing this maple because that's kind of something that I'm planning on doing as well with my project. All right, so we got this blue opened up. And 
here we go. All right, so obviously, you know, the second coat probably will not need nearly as much. Um, you know, just working around the dye and stuff like that. Typically what I do when I end up putting a second coat on is I'll just work it around in the grain. And then I'll just basically do this. Going with the grain, just making sure that I have all of the lap lines any lap lines if there is any just straightened out and I just kind of have my cloth something like that but that's just me uh, you know some guys are going to just spray these dyes on and you know other guys are going to use a brush uh, some guys are going to use just a saturated you know old t-shirt I mean it's as long as you get the dyes onto the wood you know the the basic goal then is to just make sure that uh, they're they're laid out consistent. Um, you know, with the with the solvent based dyes a little bit more, you want to work it into the grain a little bit more, and then just have a, a to make sure that they're laid out nice. Uh, whereas the water base or the the powder dyes, it, they're not quite as particular. So, anyways, here we go with the maple. is with the maple and the second coat of the blue dye this is the oak now this is very dark so maybe I should have just left it with the one coat you know with the half teaspoon and the eight ounces of lacquer thinner it is going to be a very very powerful dye stain concentrate so I'm just kind of giving you guys a heads up on that um, but I think you guys kind of figured that one out since the other videos if you've been watching so anyways just because I, I did this with a little heavier concentration I'm just taking a, a dry paper cloth I'm just wiping over this surface just to get some of the excess dyes from from off the top it's not a whole lot there's really you know not a lot being taken off it's just trying to help even some of it out and because it is a heavier concentrate um, it's just I'm just doing a wipe down on it really and that's that's the, really the only reason why I ended up doing it just to try to to even it out a little bit now I'm sure that this is uh, not going to show up quite as prevalent as when it would have something like a top coat sealer on there like like this now mind you this is still wet this is still wet as well for the liquid dyes even with the lacquer thinner it's going to take probably about 15 20 minutes for it to end up having some type of full dry out and that's when it'll end up being a lighter color so i'm thinking that it's probably going to be about this same color maybe perhaps just a little bit just a little bit lighter I mean, I'm sorry, just a little bit darker. This one's going to be a little bit lighter. But uh, again, this is a solid piece of wood and uh, a much thicker solid piece of wood, I should say. And uh, I don't think that's going to make a significant difference, but um, we'll end up seeing how it goes. And I'll be back in a little bit. You know, I just wanted to give just a, a basic demonstration with, with these standard pieces of wood versus the more exotic pieces of wood because, you know, honestly, most guys are probably going to end up using something like this. So I just wanted to give a more accurate representation instead of having some big fancy wood. So that's why I decided to go this route. Now all I'm doing is just wiping this down, making sure that it's cleaned off, and then just giving her a little rub down. Let's 
testing them on this oak. Now as for the color, some of the, the other colors have had some type of you know, just slightly different. It's been a little more washed out is what I've noticed. Um, now as for the color on this, you know, it's, pretty, it's pretty similar, it's pretty close. Uh, this is a little more of a vivid, <clears throat> vivid, a brighter blue, but you know that's a pretty good representation right there. If you can see these lighter areas, that's a pretty good representation. But then again, we don't have the sealer on it yet, so what it's like in this format, it doesn't matter quite as much. But again, I'm sticking with the same theme. I'm just throwing a just a, a standard plain acrylic on here. And something, what I've noticed, and I just maybe, I'm trying to just pass a tip along on here, is that uh, if you just give this a light dusting first, you won't need near as much seal coat, you know, top coat sealer as, as you typically do. Um, so let me give an example here. So if I just, Just give a light dusting. Now once this ends up curing, it will end up sealing a lot of the, the, the surface area of the wood. And that will require less, it will require less top coat sealer in order to seal up the rest of this you can try it out it's just a, a little something that I've, I've picked up along the way and uh, just trying to share it with you maybe it'll help out maybe it won't but um, yeah so anyways I'm gonna let this dry out now and uh, I'll come back actually you know what I'm just gonna spray this and do all of this off camera so that way you guys don't have to suffer through more stuff and um, when I end up coming back, then hopefully this will be done and we can take a look and see what it looks like. Which will probably be tomorrow morning, but you guys won't know that. <laughs> All right. See All that. right, so I am back with the finished results of this uh, Keto Liquid Dye Concentrate, the Royal Blue, uh, from this Keto Dye 5 color kit. The kit is offered as a 5 color series with the yellow, black, brown, red, and the blue. So you can check out the other videos if any of those other colors interest you. Uh, so today I'm going to show the results of this uh, video for the 8 ounces of lacquer thinner and the half a teaspoon of the keto liquid dye. Uh, and uh, this one here is the oak. I ended up putting the two coats of the uh, keto blue dye stain concentrated mix on there. On this oak here so this was with the two coats and um, it went a little bit darker than I actually anticipated it was going to uh, as you can see here this one has just the the one coat now the wood could also play a factor on this uh, this is a more figured wood this is a curly maple um, it's a pretty curly maple. Uh, this is a piece of wood that I ended up getting for, off of a eight foot board. I got several eight foot boards from a local um, lumber mill that I ended up kind of sorting through and picking them up and I scored big time when I ended up hitting some of them and I have uh, a couple of boards of that that I'm going to end up doing a project with. So this is actually the color that I was looking for and um, so this is probably how I'm going to end up going. Again, this is with the one one coat at the eight ounces of uh, lacquer thinner and the half a teaspoon of the dye stain. So you can see the, the difference in the color. It's pretty significant. But now this, again, is oak, and it does have a, a, different, a different look, whereas this is a maple. Now this isn't a the highly figured maple such as this one. I should have probably just did another board like this one with the two coats on there, but uh, just time constraint and I wanted to get this video out and you know how that goes. 
anyways, so this one is the maple. This is just a plain maple. It's, you know, has some knots and some figuring in there. Uh, but this again was with the two coats at the uh, eight ounce ratio with the half a teaspoon of the con the dye concentrate the liquid blue and uh, I really hope that this has been a good Video series for you guys to end up seeing what the keto liquid dyes look like how strong they are, you know and doing some different um, You know color ratios with with one quote coat versus the two coats and uh, on some different wood so i really hope that this has been beneficial for some people and that it helps out and uh you know thank you guys for watching and you know supporting my videos and uh i'm gonna end up actually trying to get into some of the formulas now to see what i can end up mixing up with some of these colors it may take me a little bit of time but i'm also going to try to continue on with doing some of the powders uh, I just haven't had a whole lot of time and I kind of ran out of wood, but now that I got some wood, I can end up uh, hopefully making some pretty cool colors and some some good formulas for people to end up replicating if they're interested in. And uh, thank you again for watching and I really appreciate it and have a great day.